Hey, my first video about my keyboarded uh, collectibles isn't actually going to be about one that has a great keyboard, but it's one of my favorite and one of the first ones I bought, and it's also one of the most of the oldest. This is the Epson H HX20 from uh, uh, 1982, and uh, it's one of the first notebooks. In, it's considered the, the very first one in, by some people. And uh, you can see it has a, a tape uh, using cassettes of the size that was uh, used in uh, uh, voicemail machines and uh, a small printer which is uh, inked at. The dot matrix, no dot matrix, sorry. Um, the tape is interesting because it has no hardware mechanical buttons, but it's um, electronically controlled. And I'm not going to show this actually working because I think the heads might be a little um, dirty right now. So it gave me uh, an input output error when I tried. I can actually try it, try it again and show you. When I type load, it will start uh, searching at a moderate speed, and uh, there should uh, be a, pro a program on this side. This cassette was recorded in, in uh, 1986, according to the documents that, that I got when I bought this. So. It's a bit of a miracle, in my opinion, that it even uh, sometimes reads it. When I got this first, it, re it read uh, the cassettes it came with uh, perfectly. At least the programs I could see on them at all. I don't think it is doing that right now, however, because uh, it, sh it should already have found uh, the program at this point. So I'll break it and give it, give it another try. I can also use this tape in manual mode by doing control cassette and this will show me a um, software, software counter which I can reset oh, this way I think nope well, that's not important. I don't remember how, so I'll rewind. And now I break out of this mode and try again loading just one time. You can hear it makes uh, some very... Here it is. It found a program called Wind. If it does the same as before, it will give a, an I.O. error in a short bit. Like now. There it is. But anyway, you can hear it makes some uh, precise sounding noises. And gives a pretty good feeling for something that was made about uh, more than 30 years ago. The, the tape unit is actually detachable and you can put other accessories instead of it, but this is the only one I have. The only um, mechanical button there is is the, to eject, which is actually pretty hard to push, but, well, that doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to type something and uh, also show the printer. You see, this screen isn't very, very fast to refresh at all, and uh, the computer is actually very slow. It's below 1 MHz, but I don't remember exactly how. It's uh, in the hundreds of kilohertz ranges, range of the, the processor. And uh, you can also see it uh, typed the first part of uh, my sentence, then you cannot see most of the latter part, but 
it did uh, make a new line towards the end because this screen contains 20 characters but there is some virtual window at least that's what the manual calls it containing 40 because I think that's how many the printer prints we can uh, verify that by just hitting well first I need to turn the printer on because that's a hardware button you can keep it off to save power when it's not been used there is also a manual paper feed button and uh, there is a button uh, that prints the current uh, the current uh, screen both the part that is being shown and uh, the part uh, that is uh, outside of the visible window at this time uh, the 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 print button is uh, where because i don't actually remember where to find it right now there is a it's called the copy but i'm stupid and uh, Right now I cannot see it here. Control copy. It made uh, uh, an ink bot here, but that's just because it hasn't been used in quite some time. But aside from that, it soon started uh, printing actual text. It doesn't seem to have printed my actual sentence. It's only managed the, the latter part but again I think that's because it doesn't be using some time and uh, if I do it again I trust it will work I seem to remember wrong about the the length of this uh, print because it also only prints the the, the first part like the screen. There might be some way to halve the size of the characters but I certainly don't remember that. There is also this button graph to draw some symbols a bit like on the Commodore 64. This can be printed too. Like, let's try. Yeah, they are. The ink is a bit uh, used up now. I do have another another cartridge, so that will be good for a while. And I think they are also easily findable on eBay because they were used uh, in other machines. The exact same cartridges. It is this black part here which wraps around the printer. Okay, um, I don't think I have uh, much else to show except uh, I will type some all other things to let you hear. And uh, this keyboard feels a bit mushy to me. It is not exactly snappy. And I don't even entirely like the, the slope of the keycaps. But, well, this is a generally very nice computer and, and I like it a lot. It has an internal battery which is nickel cadmium and I don't know if this has ever, ever been replaced in my unit because that's strange most units as far as I read don't have a working battery anymore but mine does and it actually lives for a very long time or at least it did last time I used this now I'm powering this from mains because the battery was certainly completely depleted, but whoops, you can see that it's running on battery and uh, I can try 
moving the, uh, the, the printer motor and you can see the battery is actually in a decent shape because otherwise the screen uh, would um, dim down during during printing or or mo motion and uh, the same would happen when using the tape but it doesn't and I'd say the tape is moving at its uh, normal speed and I have only been charging this for perhaps half an hour it does need a very much longer charge to fill up and uh, there is no automatic uh, charging circuitry at all so you need to monitor how long you have been charging this for and stop before it gets overcharged and uh, rinse your battery. It is possible that this particular unit has had its battery replaced even though my seller never told me about that. It's possible because it really doesn't seem too possible to for this battery to still hold up this well. This part of the machine is not is an attachment. It says expansion unit and all of this just contains some RAM. <laughs> so that's a bit ridiculous but uh, it does uh, it does add a very much needed amount of RAM because I think the default is just 2 kilobytes and uh, this adds I think a total of another 8 if you fill up all the units inside this with chips and I think uh, I'm not sure how much I have I probably have them all filled up but I don't remember entirely I will show you the input and output connectors on this side this is uh, the power button which looks like a hardware button but is in fact software because you can verify that when uh, the computer crashes just turning this off won't turn the screen off anymore this is uh, to change the mm, contrast of the LCD let me try that see these are tape jacks for an external tape which can be used instead of the internal one there is a reset button and on this side you have a serial port RS232 standard normal and another serial port in a format of its own which I'm not sure I remember what is meant to, to be used for and of course uh, power I don't have its original supply but I have uh, I use a universal one which works just fine on the bottom side you have this is very easy some chips that are mostly firmware you can replace the basic with some other things because this computer was sometimes used for field specific applications and came with other things instead of basic and uh, the battery is not accessible through um, some kind of slot you have to open up the whole thing but many people do replace the battery with uh, a do-it-yourself contraption with nickel battery which lasts even longer this lasts about uh, I wouldn't want to say uh, an exaggerated thing but I actually remember this when you lasts about 30 days of continuous use so unless you use the tape or the printer you can keep this on for 30 days without ever turning it off and uh, only after a month will the battery die and uh, if you use this to type to talk about the keyboard in more detail uh, 
you have these cursor keys, keys which like a uh, bit like a Commodore 64 are cramped into two only and you have to use shift to oops I entered the monitor instead of the basic and uh, two, two for the basic and this isn't entirely intuitive uh, as a way to, to, to navigate the cursor at least not for me aside from that the keyboard isn't great but uh, it is more than usable another thing of notice is that the caps lock is softer it doesn't lock into place at all that's different from the Commodore 64 which does lock in place I don't remember whether it takes exactly like shift even though it's softer or has a some different functionality, let's try it out. Like now it's engaged, which means I type in lowercase because the default is uppercase. But the numbers are still the numbers even with caps lock locked. So that's a different behavior from just holding shift, which will give you symbols over numbers. That's it for this computer, and it's a really great computer. It was followed by the Epson PX4 and the Epson PX8, which aren't exactly as cool in my opinion. They are both uh, CPM computers, and uh, they come with a cassette attachment. In the case of the PX8, it's a it's a part of the machine. In the case of the PX4, it's an attachment like this one, but incompatible and they don't come with a printer so that's a bit of a unique thing about this model they do come with bigger screens and they are much faster and they can run CPM applications which makes them more useful in practice perhaps for their age but none of this is extremely useful now so this is probably the coolest the coolest one of the three and uh, okay that's about it next time I'll show you my Olivetti M10, which has a much better keyboard. Bye.